Hi, I'm Elizabeth Sheets, Senior International Business Major from Fort Mill, South Carolina. Welcome to the inaugural edition of Inside Wofford College. In this segment, we bring you a look at Wofford's innovative summer research program, The Community of Scholars. Dr. Philip Racine discusses his new book, an edited collection of letters from a prominent 19th century Charleston family. First, we have the remarkable learning experiments conducted by Dr. John Pilly, a Wofford professor emeritus of psychology with his dog, Chaser. This amazing dog has learned to identify by name more than a thousand objects. Pilly's former student and current Wofford psychology professor, Alliston Reed, is helping to document data on Chaser's achievements in order to present Pilly's findings to research journals. Here's what they had to tell us about their work. In 2004, there was an article, a German dog by the name of Rico, who had learned over 200 words. So, decided, let's see what the boundary might be. And what, did you, what have you found out? Well, we found out that the boundary we don't yet know. We do know that Chaser has been able to learn the names of over a thousand objects has been able to learn uh, some common nouns. Uh, so we think we're just on the frontier. Border Collies, uh, with this domestication and herding sheep, it's necessary that the Border Collie keep the eye on the sheep, but be attentive to the master. So over the centuries, dogs that weren't attentive to the language dropped out of the gene pool. Hmm. And so that's why most of us believe that they have this special ability for language exceeding even that of apes. Wait a minute, there. Come by, come by, stay out, stay out, stay out. There. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There. Good girl. Drop, Chase, drop. Drop, drop. Crawl, crawl, girl. Crawl, crawl. Good girl. Stand. Get back, Chase. Get back. Get back. 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 There. Step. Stay. Step. Step, Chase. Chase. Step. Step. Stay. Okay. One. Two. Three. Good girl. Good girl. This article is about border colonies in National Geographic. And they're asking questions that are very similar to the questions that he is asking he has been asking about the degree to which animals such as border collies might have uh, or might share some of the same sort of verbal abilities or language acquisition abilities that humans have. Well, the key thing is to try to teach the dog two concepts. Uh, one is knowledge that objects have names, but then the dog needs to learn some cue as to how we connect the words with the object so that the dog has to know what particular object the words refer to. And our procedure was just very simple. Uh, we simply held an object before, holding it in our hand, saying, this is, uh, this is rabbit. Uh, I'm going to hide rabbit. I want you to find rabbit. So then we hid the rabbit and then while she's looking for the rabbit, we're using associations of the name and the object. Chaser, find rabbit. Find rabbit. And my theory is that, is that while she was searching for the rabbit, uh, somehow or another that word, the name, stayed in her memory. I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure. So that within a span of a few minutes, the name of the object and the actual object itself was being paired. And this is good old classical conditioning. And somewhere along the way, the hypothesis is that somewhere along the way, after those many objects that she was learning, there was this inference, ah, oh, objects have names. And when I say this is, then that's the cue that helps her to identify the name with the object. Then we created a specific design and followed some pretty rigorous experimental procedures to demonstrate it, such that quantitative data could be obtained and subjected to statistical analysis. I'm professor, I'm professor. 
Good girl. Find poison for all. Find poison for all. Good girl. Find spook. Find spook. Good girl. Tap a duck. Tap a duck. Good girl. Chase. Find chicken. Find chicken. Good girl. Find goose. Find goose. Yeah. Swiss goose. Swiss goose. Chicken. Yeah, Swiss chicken. Chicken. Okay, good girl. Find red dog. Find red dog. Look for red dog. Don't see red dog? Find wise owl. Find wise owl. Good girl, put wise owl. Find decoy. Decoy. Okay, now get red dog. Okay, so she missed one here. As long as she does 80%, uh, percent, I feel pretty good about the memory system. Yeah, as you well know, do dogs are very keen on physical cues. You know, most dogs, if you point, most dogs will follow that pointing. And facial cues, just looking, and they, they, they notice the eyes. Well, what exclusive learning demonstrates is that the dog learns the name of the object purely on the basis of words, no physical cues. It's all language. Uh, and that's quite an accomplishment. Well, let's do a few more. Find Poppy. Get Poppy. There's Poppy. In touch. Find Bamboozle. Find Bamboozle. There's Bamboozle. In touch. Bozo. Find Bozo. There's Bozo. But Bozo in town. Find sweet potato, sweet potato. In town. This, this work is not original with us. We, we, we're replicating some research that was done over in Germany. Uh, we are carrying it a little further, though, I think, in that we're, we're pushing the boundaries. The boundary is not 200 words or 300 words. It, we don't think it's even the boundaries of a thousand words. But we are pushing the boundary to a degree and showing that she can learn not only the name of objects, but she can also learn words that are common nouns, which represent categories. There, there are a bunch of researchers that are pushing the limits now in terms of trying to find out just what are the capabilities of dogs.